Hi, everybody. Um, I am waiting for my next slide here. Uh, <laughs> I am Azure Jane Lunatic. I was raised on the Lois McMaster Bejold um, email discussion list. I believe I've met a few of you there. Um, I explored message boards back in the early 2000s. Um, later, around 2007 uh, to 2010, mm -hmm. I ran much of LiveJournal's user-facing suggestions community, which was certainly an adventure. Um, I spent time on LiveJournal's private IRC server, uh, which also hosted the DreamWidth IRC channels before they moved to Freenode. Um, I moderated in the DreamWidth channel during the transition from the private server to Freenode, which was also exciting. Um, and more recently, I noticed that the Geek Feminism Wiki had not much information on moderation, so I decided to help out with that a bit. I'm going to talk about some of the misconceptions and barriers against adopting moderation um, in various communities. I'm going to talk about fundamental elements of moderation. I'm going to briefly brush over some of the tools and tactics you can use in order to moderate. I'm going to talk about soft moderation, um, which is entirely interpersonal skills. Um, I'm going to talk about when to say, you know what, this particular person or topic is just not serving this community well and ban it. Um, and then if there is time, um, I can talk about various incidents um, and, and maybe have some questions. Some of the misconceptions I've heard about moderation is, um, well, you've got to have somebody approving every message on the mailing list um, before it gets posted. That is certainly one form of moderation, but that's hardly the most effective form and not necessarily time effective and not suited to all com communities. Um, humorlessly enforcing on topic rules, that is one form of moderation. It's also not necessarily a form of moderation suited to you or your community. Um, there are times to say, you know what, um, we'll allow some chatter about um, cats and sports. And there are times to say, look, this is getting distracting. Can we please get back on topic? Um, but not all communities that need moderation have such strict on topic rules. Um, not all rules are right for all communities. One of the places where I help moderate the Dream with IRC channels has banned US politics, for example. Some places can discuss it just fine. That community, it has proved unwise over the years, so it's just not happening there anymore. Um, and you can also um, use community-based moderation. You don't have to come in from above and have a moderator say, um, you, no, you, yes, um, and, and you know, interfere with the community's own rules and standards. Sometimes um, there are reasons, either real or imagined, why a community doesn't want to take up moderation. Um, starting moderation may cause conflicts within the group. Um, starting moderation could cause situations which look kind of terrible um, if, if somebody comes in and starts dictating things and maybe they're not exactly the person who would be best in that role. Um, sometimes the people who would like to make changes in a space are not the people who have the power to do that. Um, and sometimes the people who do have the power, yes, yes it is story time with Az. <laughs> sometimes the people who do have the power um, don't 
actually have the willingness to make those changes. Um, so that can be fraught. Um, sometimes there is someone who's controlling a community through the power of fear. And if you remove them, um, who steps up to take their place? Um, it could be somebody worse. Um, sometimes you have someone who, um, let's say, um, insults contributors to a major operating system project and calls them stupid. Um, and it would be really um, not particularly possible to remove that person, even though they're causing a lot of trouble troubles um, because they're also contributing a lot of code and maybe nobody else quite knows how to make that one thing work. Um, sometimes people who are causing a substantial disruption in the community are also legitimately on the very bottom of some really awful power structures and have legitimate oppressions contributing to their general um, unhappy attitude towards the world. Um, so that's a situation where sometimes you've, you've got to be really, really careful and try not to add more things to that person's general woes. And it's really, really super hard when there's somebody in the community who's got a lot of things not going right for them who's also disrupting the community, community substantially. Um, politics. Anytime you try to make a change, that is a situation where politics can come up and all sorts of wacky, weird things can happen. Um, and sometimes people will say, but free speech, you can't moderate without taking away people's free speech. That is, as the little graphic indicates, a red herring. Um, <laughs> Uh, there are, uh, thank you Wikimedia, um, you are very helpful. Um, <clears throat> there are plenty of places on the internet that people can air their views. Your forum cannot, that you and your forum, unless you are a um, provider of, like, maybe your Facebook, maybe your Dreamwit, um, sometimes there are things which are legal to say, um, and you do sort of owe them a, a place. Many open source forums are not that place. You don't have that problem. Um, you can kick somebody out of your community and tell them not to say that without actually violating their free speech. You are not probably the government. Um, what is moderation? Um, one of my favorite um, series of books in the world is Lois McMaster's Mac McMaster Bajold's um, Rokosigan series. Um, and in that series, um, Miles discovers that a weapon is a device for making your enemy change, in this case, his mind. Miles usually doesn't go up against that many female opponents. Um, moderation, similarly, is any tool or technique that you use to enforce the rules of your forum. The elements of moderation. Um, first, where are you doing the moderation? Um, what forum is this? Some organizations have multiple forums um, with multiple purposes, multiple technologies. What are the rules of this forum? Who is moderating and do they have the power to actually moderate? That's important. They need the tools, they need the permission to use the tools, and they need to be around um, to moderate. Um, it does you no good to have 12 moderators when they're all asleep when your message board catches fire. Communication, your moderators need to be able to communicate with each other. And iteration, you are not going to get a perfect moderation strategy straight off. Um, try for a good one but realize that it's going to be flawed, you're going to make mistakes, um, it may not be fully accepted right out, just give it a good try and listen to feedback. So first think about your forums. How many do you have? What 
organizational purpose does each forum serve? Do you have a GitHub? Um, do you have IRC? Do you have a mailing list? Do you have a wiki? Um, for each place, you're going to have to take the time to think about what you're doing with it and what rules are appropriate for the place. Um, what's on topic, what's off topic, what's the intended purpose, and what's unacceptable. Um, look at how they, they work currently. If they're not working the way you would like them to, um, imagine the best case scenario um, because you're going to start making rules and possible changes to work towards that best case scenario. Not all forums are using the same technology. You could be using Facebook, Wiki, um, Live Journal, uh, mailing list, IRC. Um, figure out how well it suits the purpose you need. Um, whether the moderation tools are available on that platform. Um, how easy would it be um, to add the, the tools you need to, to make things happen? Um, is there something else out there that would help? Um, if there's technology out there that works, how easy would it be to switch over? Um, I happen to know some, someone who runs an anonymous uh, chat uh, board, basically. They started out using LiveJournal. Um, unfortunately, the platform at that time was getting a little unstable, and it was getting really hard to use reliably, so they did wind up migrating over to DreamWidth. It was, it took some doing, um, but they did actually get that working. Um, there are other places where um, the original forum went away and there's no way to get it back. Um, and it wasn't possible to, to move it off that. Um, you are going to have to have rules. Usually rules do not arise out of um, a vacuum. It's often a good idea to look at the rules that other people use and how well they work, and how you see your organization making use of those. Figure out what rules your forums need. If your forum doesn't need a no cat pictures rule, there's no need to, to put that in. If your forum regularly explodes about, say, ice cream flavors, maybe consider making that off topic. People are going to get emotional about stuff. Recognize that and figure that into whatever rules you make. It would be a lot easier in some ways if people were robots, but we're not, and that's got to be accounted for. <coughs> are the rules enforceable? <coughs> Sometimes your moderators say, hey, it would be a really good idea to have this rule, um, but the board of directors is like, well, can we not? It would be perhaps a little difficult to enforce no insulting people in certain Linux forums. Um, will the community accept them? Um, would Slashdot um, say enforce Will, will be willing to have a no profanity rule? Probably not. Can your technology work to enforce them if you have no way to track, say, which IP address an anonymous comment is coming from? You can't necessarily have a no replying to yourself rule um, because how do you know if it's the same person? It could possibly be two people refreshing very, very rapidly. Um, and if you can't um, necessarily enforce something, maybe you shouldn't make it a rule. You could, but it would be hard. So you've got to tailor the rules to, to match your tools. 
and make sure your users know the rules. It is really unpleasant to have to just be merrily using some forum and then have your account taken away because you had violated some rule that you've never heard of. Make sure the rules are posted prominently and make sure that the users are familiar with them. Sometimes you can introduce the users to the rules. Um, you can highlight them when it looks like something is going to go down. And sometimes the u users can, in fact, agree to the rules, even if they don't actually read them, um, if your technology allows that when setting up an account. So who is going to moderate um, and enforce all of these rules? You do need people. Um, it's difficult to automatically um, have things disappear without somebody keeping track because links, um, when you've got a link and it's, um, it looks like spam, it's not always spam. When you're selecting a person to moderate, look for trustworthiness. Um, do they do what they say they're, they're going to do? Um, do the people in charge trust them um, with moderation responsibilities? Are they willing to enforce the rules that you've got? Do they have the soft skills in order to say, hey, it looks like you're about to break a rule here. Can you not? And other things. You don't really last long as a moderator if you just sort of freeze up when somebody's yelling at you because people are mean on the internet. <laughs> people are very, very mean on the internet and I have to tell them to maybe not swear at each other? Oh, no. <laughs> that is not a person who is going to be great as a moderator. Um, sometimes it is similar to ruling a kindergarten class. Sometimes you have to say, hey, you, sit down. You, shut up. Everybody, let's get apple juice. <laughs> Um, you also have to have availability. The person who is working a 40-hour job and another 15-hour job um, and has five hobbies is probably not the person to choose as a moderator because they're going to only be around sporadically. You may want to give them moderation powers um, but you do not necessarily want to dis depend on them to actually be around to moderate. Um, whether you choose to give moderation powers is up to you, but you shouldn't necessarily count that person as an active moderator if they're not actually there. Um, when you need real-time moderation, you need to look at when your top use times are. You need to look at when the problems seem to happen, if the problems are happening off peak. Um, sometimes your moderation is just um, look over the thing for five minutes at some point during the day. Sometimes it is let's spend three hours split up into chunks um, all around the clock. Um, make sure you have somebody who actually has that amount of spare time and the willingness to invest. Check in with your moderators. Um, make sure that they're doing OK and that they can still get the time. Um, and think about giving them some help if it seems like things are pretty, going pretty heavy, because moderation can be really, really draining. Um, your soft moderation skills are very emotionally intense. Um, and people, even if it's not very many hours, if it's really, if you're dealing with very shouty users or if you're being very carefully diplomatic, that does take a great toll on a person and they're going to need some backup um, on that. When you've got moderators, you do need to give them access to the moderator powers. 
Um, you can have somebody who is in the IRC channel 18 hours a day, but if they do not actually have ops, there's not much they can do if somebody comes in and starts flooding. Communication and feedback is important. Um, you don't want to leave your moderators out on a limb, um, and you don't want to have things go on that aren't working. First, moderators need to be able to talk with each other. And that conversation usually is not supposed to happen in public. When you have, say, two people who have just joined the IRC channel, they seem to know each other really, really well. And they have started up a conversation that is almost, but not quite, on topic. And they are using words in ever so subtle wrong ways. They're talking about what the things, it's almost like they belong there, but something's just wrong. Your moderators are going to need a place where they can say, hey, did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. Let's keep an eye on that. And depending on your rules, they may, may let it play out. Or they may say, hey, you, you're not behaving in a way conducive with the intended purpose of this place, and we're asking you to leave. Nay, we're telling you, you just left. They need to have a place to say, hey, I told user one that they cannot actually post those graphic pictures of their cat's most recent surgery. They do need to put that somewhere else. And if they do that again, they need to not. They need to be able to say, hey, you know, it's not quite worth doing anything about it. But did you notice that person just keeps doing the thing and doing the thing and doing the thing. That's something the moderators need to be able to say to each other. If somebody approaches a moderator and says, hey, I have a problem with um, Joe. Joe has been um, advocating his coffee a little too strongly. Um, I don't think it's quite spam, but it's not really on topic. One person could say that to one moderator. 10 people could say that to five moderators, and those moderators need to compare notes on what's being said to them, and they need to do that in a private place. Say the moderator has said, hey, Joe, knock it off with your coffee. Um, they need to report back to the other moderators, hey, I talked with Joe, and let Joe know that um, maybe he should give the coffee thing a rest for a while. Um, sometimes the moderators are going to have personal opinions of the users. That is okay, and that is not something that needs to be aired in public. It's, you know, that one user. <gasps> oh. But, you know, when you see that user, you're going to want to say, hello, user, it's good to see you again. Have a good day. And the place where the, the moderators are talking needs to be a place where the, the group leadership can keep an eye on what's going on. If there's any problems, if the moderators aren't doing something, if the moderators are moderating a little harshly, um, if the moderators have decided that Steve is a really great guy, great American soldier, nice shield, but they're, the moderators are communists and they don't like Steve. <laughs> um, maybe that's something that, you know, the leadership should know about. Um, the, the leadership needs to be able to talk with the moderators and make the moderators feel like they're heard and, and valued. 
um, because it really sucks if you're moderating and you don't feel like you're getting support and you feel like leadership never backs you up. And that can be prevented by having the, the leadership actively engaged in the moderator forum. And you're not going to get everything perfect at first. Every time you make a change to the rules of an area, there are going to be problems. You're not, you're not going to get it perfect. It's going to be weird. People won't be used to it. Um, there will be complaints. You may find that the we must be 100% on topic or else rule just isn't sustainable. That's OK. This is what change is for. Learn from your mistakes. Um, keep an eye on the forum. See how things are going. If things are going well, that's great. If things are going not as well as they could be, be prepared to make the change. Listen to the moderators and listen to the users. Um, sometimes the moderators will say, hey, um, you didn't foresee this, but suddenly um, the user picks have become a problem. Somebody could have um, say, make a comment that is perfectly in line, but paired with the you fail user pick. That is no longer a fine comment, and moderators need to take notice of the user picks. Um, and that needs to be in the rules now. Um, that this user pick is part of what you're saying. And yeah, we're paying attention to that. What do the users think about the moderation? Maybe the users um, would really like to share photos of breastfeeding. And the rules from on high say no breastfeeding. And maybe the moderators are like, well, this actually seems legit. Can we change the rules? And sometimes the rules can get changed, and sometimes the rules can't. It just depends. You don't have to address every single problem um, in your forum at once. Sometimes you just pick something that's easy and give it a try and see how it works. And once people have got used to that, try something Keep, keep moderating the first thing and try another thing. Um, it, things, cultural change really doesn't happen overnight. And a lot of the time, if you have a user base that is invested in making their place great, they will see what the moderators are doing, and they will help out. Sometimes I would go into a forum and see um, a, a flame war that was about to get started. And I would go, oh no, this is really not going to end well. I should probably step in and say, OK, it looks like what's going on is this. Can you uh, maybe? not start stabbing each other. And then I would read further along, and I would see that somebody else who was not a moderator had said, hey, guys, this is kind of heating up a bit. Could, could we cool it down? And sometimes that was all that was needed. And somebody else, not a moderator, had already done it. Your moderation tools are going to depend on your technology. Sometimes, um, like the, the tools that are available for mailman lists are not the tools that are available for Twitter and vice versa. Um, you're going to have to sit down with your tool and look through um, the specific things. But moderation tools come in a couple of different flavors. Um, Approving messages before they're posted. Identifying messages um, which are going to be bad, um, which are um, <laughs> sorry, it looks like that 
I, I know I had a distinction there, um, but it, it's not particularly clear. Um, you can flag things for spam automatically. For example, if it's got Viagra in it, it's possibly spam. Some things will let you do that. Some forums will, will, some tools will allow you to remove inappropriate messages after they have been posted. Um, like Twitter will let you delete your own tweets or if your organization has tweeted something that ought not to have been tweeted, that can be deleted. Whereas if you've emailed something out, um, it's been emailed out and it's going to be out there. You really can't make that go away very well. You can remove users who have been posting inappropriate messages on most forums. On some community moderated forums, you can um, promote um, particular messages, um, upvotes and downvotes on Reddit and on Slashdot. You can promote, promote or demote particular users. And there are so many other little things that various, various tools will give you. Just take a look and see what other people have done with, with that particular tool. And then there are moderation tactics. Um, you can appoint trusted moderators um, either from your leadership community or um, figure out who in the user base is already doing some moderation, some soft moderation work, and promote, promote them and give them the tools that they need to actually do hard moderation. You can let the community do some of the moderation itself, like with community voting and um, community flagging as spam or otherwise inappropriate. You can identify and discourage unacceptable behavior. That's when you say, this is the rule. This is what you just did. That's against the rule. Don't do it. And then take uh, any necessary hard moderation action. <laughs> then there's identifying and encouraging excellent behavior. You did this thing. It was awesome. Thank you for doing that. It's great, and it's what this community is all about. Some of the soft moderation tools you can use. You can actively introduce the new users to the rules in addition to have the rules passively available. Hi, you seem to be new. Welcome. This is what we do around here. No politics. Um, and kitten pictures are encouraged. Use a short summary of the rules um, when you're doing that. Give them, by all means, the the link to where the rules are posted officially, but tell them the rules that it's most important for them to know up front. That means often, what have people been violating the most recently? Maybe there's been a spate of um, using pictures of poo in messages, and you've decided that that's just not what you want. Maybe there have been, um, in your cats only forum, a bunch of dog pictures. Figure out what's, what's going on and help the new users avoid that specific problem up front. <laughs> it's a really bad experience to come in and then immediately violate the same rule that everybody else has been violating because the moderators are going to be pretty short fused on that tactic at that point. Um, sometimes you see somebody who is violating the rules. It's not worth maybe banning them, but you can say, hey, that particular thing, we don't do, we don't do that here. That's against our rules. Sometimes when there is a disagreement going on that's escalating and the people are trying to argue each other into accepting their position, um, and they're just like, you don't understand. Um, root beer is better than Coke. No, Coke is better than root beer. And you can step in and say, okay, um, I see that 
Coke is excellent because it is fizzy and caffeinated. And root beer is excellent because um, this particular root beer is fizzy and uncaffeinated. Do I understand your positions pretty well? And then sometimes they go, oh, you're caffeine sensitive. Of course you don't like Coke. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes um, you can, in fact, stop a flame war with, with just summar summarizing the position so everybody involved feels heard and sometimes realizes that they really do have irreconcilable differences. If, say, Coke versus Pepsi is an eternal flame war for your community, if it comes up, about three times a year. It always starts with um, Coke is delicious. No, Coke is terrible. Pepsi is delicious. You can write down the steps that this takes and say, you just mentioned Coke. You may be new here. That is a frequent hot topic. And this is how things usually go. Let's maybe not do that again. And sometimes they'll try it anyway. And at that point, you can say, no, really, we've had this conversation before. We're tired of having it. Let us not. Don't point that eyebrow at me, it might be loaded. Sometimes you can, in fact, stop a flame war really, really subtly. Um, sometimes if people are starting to do a conversation that usually leads down a wrong path or using um, loaded terms that, that sometimes like only jerks um, like Pepsi, you can say, hey, how about that new movie? I just saw a movie. It was great. Um, and the ensuing discussion about the movie may drown out Coke versus Pepsi, or Linux versus Windows versus Mac, whatever you have. Sometimes there are two people who are looking like they're going to square off. And you say, OK, I don't know that person really well, but I do know this person. Hey, you, um, take them aside privately and say, hey, I noticed that you were getting into a discussion with that person. It looks like it's going nowhere good fast. Can you maybe not yell at them? Is that a thing that you could do for us? And if they stop yelling, that takes away half the flame war. We hope it's half the flame war. Sometimes other people get involved. Sometimes you have somebody who obviously has some really big problem, and they're very, very upset. And if somebody in a position of power says, you're really upset, what's the problem here? They may start saying, well, this is broken. It's really broken. It's important to me. Um, I want it unbroken. It's really important to me. and they can then maybe be asked and led through describing how it's broken, how they expect it to work, um, why it's so important. And sometimes when they have um, gone through this process, they feel listened to, cared about, and suddenly they are no longer yelling in your forum. It's great. And ideally, you'll be able to pass that along to whoever is responsible for fixing it. Sometimes um, somebody comes into IRC at 3 a.m. their time, and they just want to tell crude jokes. Now, many people enjoy a good crude joke. I enjoy it. Some of my friends enjoy it. However, the time and the place is not this forum. This is one of the, the free speech things. Why, yes, as a person with autonomy and free speech, they are able 
to make crude jokes. However, they are not allowed to make crude jokes in this forum. Be very specific. That thing you just said is not a thing that you say here. We don't care whether you say that on Twitter. Just don't say it here. Some organizations may say, um, as a function of our intentional community, if you say that sort of thing on Twitter, you're not actually welcome in here, even though it's not in here. But that's not all forums. Um, a lot of forums are perfectly happy to say, just don't say that in here. Stop it. No. Bad. Wrong. Moderators are also human. Um, moderators have biases. Moderators hate things. Um, moderators love things. And moderators who know what they hate and love um, compensate for it better. I am terrified of dogs. Absolutely terrified. I know that about myself. And when I am asked to do something involving dogs, I smile very politely brace myself and deal with those dogs. Um, if I can't deal with something and I know it, I can say, hey, can you deal with this? Um, sometimes if all of your moderators say, I am unwilling to deal with this topic in the slightest, um, you can just ban that topic. It works. Some things you don't have to deal with in your community at all. If you have somebody who is breaking the same rule over and over and over, that person needs to leave. If the person is testing the limits, doing something that's almost breaking a rule, almost breaking another rule, almost breaking a third rule, that's, depending on your community, that's something that maybe your moderators can say, this is enough, you're going to leave. If people are being aggressive to other users, um, making death threats, um, death threats have no place in anybody's community, um, you should probably ask them to leave. If you have 15 people coming in and all making death threats, um, you should ask them all to leave. If you have 15 people coming in spamming you with cat pictures when it's a no cat pictures allowed forum, um, that sounds like there is some coordinated group who is saying, hey, let's make it cat pictures day here. And when that's happening, just kick them out. Um, if you have multiple moderators who say, I refuse to deal with this person, they just piss me off. Um, even if theoretically that person should be allowed, maybe that person is just a terrible fit for your community, and maybe they should leave. Spam. Spam is something you shouldn't tolerate. Kick them out, burn them with fire. <laughs> and um, I know that we've got about half a minute left, um, but does anybody have any questions? Uh, thank you all for coming. <laughs>